Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to take a look at some stuff from Twilight Masquerade, and I'm going to do something which I do occasionally, and I try and, you know, keep it down a little bit, but I'm going to do it today. I was right. I nailed it. I called it. I am absolutely delighted. And it was a very easy prediction to make. But you know that Okapon that I showed you yesterday? I showed you that Japanese, well, a couple of days ago. I showed you that Japanese product with Okapon, and I said, hey, this promo is going to be the Elite Trainer Box promo in the West. And I told you that it was probably going to be not very long at all until we actually got an English image which confirmed that. Well, now we have an English image to confirm that. Over on the Pokemon Center, they have gone and updated the listing for the Elite Trainer Box. And one of the things they've done in that listing is they have gone and shown us that, yes, this Illustration Rare Ogapon is the Elite Trainer Box promo, which, which really isn't a particularly good, let's be honest with you. It's not exactly some huge prediction because we knew the Ogre Pond was going to be the Elite Trainer Box promo. We had already been told that explicitly. And this is an illustration rare Ogre Pond. So the only way it wasn't going to be this is if somehow they gave us a different illustration rare Ogre Pond in the Elite Trainer Box and then found us another way to get this one from Japan, which is just messy. So nah. This was always going to be it. We have an image of the content of the Elite Trainer Box that clearly shows that this is the promo. But they've also gone and been lovely. And they've just given us a nice, big, clear image of the promo. Obviously, there are two versions of it. We've got the regular version, which comes in every Elite Trainer Box. And then we got the Pokemon Center exclusive version, which only comes in the Pokemon Center exclusive Elite Trainer Box, and is, to be fair, exactly the same card, but it's got a new stamp. A Pokemon Center stamp. And anyone that knows me knows I love a good stamp. So yeah, it's Ogapom. It is, of course, the Ogapom we were shown a while back. We were shown the regular art version of this. Well, with the initial reveal of Twilight Masquerade. And... It's a decent enough card. It, it's not a great card, but it is a decent enough card. Single energy, search for two basic energy and put them into your hand. It's not amazing. I mean, it's nice to have energy to use with Teal Mask Ogre Pony X, which will you know, then draw you can attach an extra energy with the ability and draw a card. But what we really like here is the attack two energy. 20 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Basically, with a full bench, you do 120 damage. It's not a stunning card. It, it is not some kind of game-breaking phenomenal card or anything silly like that. It is a decent, competent card, which is probably going to see a bit of play here and there. But it's also bootyful, and I think that's pretty gosh darn nice, honestly. It's not surprising in the least that this is our Elite Trainer Box promo. It's also not surprising they updated it so quickly. Because the rule very simply is that we don't see cards first. Japan gets cards first. And sometimes we're shown the Elite Trainer Box promos really early. But that's generally where they've already been revealed in Japan. The Elite Trainer Box went up for pre-order without an image of the promo. Because it hadn't been shown off in Japan. Now that it has, it's totally fair game. But that's not the only thing that was shown off from Twilight Masquerade. We also saw Blissey. And yeah, it's not been that long since we saw Blissey in Japanese, honestly. It's a little bit weird that we, we're seeing the English version of Blissey so quickly. But I am delighted. I, I think this Blissey is legit. I genuinely think this Blissey is a great card. And the more I think about it, the more I look at it, the more I, you know, sit down and start planning out deck lists with this card the more I think that this could actually be genuinely great. And also, and I, I know I put this on the screen the other day, but I, I didn't really make a very big deal about it, which I now regret. So let me make a big deal about it now. 300 HP on a stage one Pokemon. Like the maximum amount of HP that we will give to a stage two Pokemon is 340. Honestly, most of them don't even get that. Charizard, stage two EX, 
great card, sees a bunch of play, 330. It is rare that Pokemon have 340 HP. That is the absolute maximum. Stage 1 EXs with 300 HP. Look, I went over to PKMNCards.com, which is the best place to search for stuff like this. And I went looking for Stage 1 Pokemon EXs with a redonkulous amount of HP. Now, there have been a couple with 300. Stage 1 EXs with 300 HP. We have the Gyarados from Scarlet and Violet, but the attacks are kind of garbage, so sorry about that. We had the Copperaja from Powder Air Evolved that I revealed, yay. I still think, and that actually takes 30 less damage from attacks. I still think that especially with Metang, this could end up being pretty good. And then we saw the Melmetal from, well, Obsidian Flames. They had 300 HP. So this isn't the first time we've seen a stage 1 EX of 300 HP, and I'm not pretending it is. But I absolutely am telling you that 300 HP is ridiculous. Also, and I know this doesn't really mean anything, right? But Scarlet and Violet 1, we had a 300 HP Stage 1 EX. Scarlet and Violet 2, we had a 300 HP Stage 1 EX. Scarlet and Violet 3, we had a 300 HP Stage 1 EX. And then we have to wait till Scarlet and Violet 6 to get another one. That's weird. Don't know why that happened. That confuses me. Doesn't really matter. It's just a bit weird that we had one three sets in a row and then took two sets off. I don't know why. It's not just about the HP, though, with Blissey, because I love everything about this card. Maybe the weakness and retreat costs, we can say, aren't great, but everything else. The ability Happy Switch says once during your turn, you can move a basic energy from one of your Pokemon to another of your Pokemon. And this is a great ability, because we've got a million different Pokemon out there, or trainer cards, that can only attach to specific Pokemon. So things like the Ogapon I showed you earlier that accelerates the grass energy, but only to itself. Or Sandy Shock CX, which can accelerate the fighting energy, but only to itself. Or Dark Patch, that can accelerate a darkness energy, but only to a darkness Pokemon. Having Blissey on your bench, and it's only once per turn, and we've seen abilities like this in the past for specific energy types that are as much as you like. But even once per turn, the idea that you can just always move one energy per turn really makes... You know, everything I've just mentioned gets better because of Blissey. And then as if that's not good enough, we've also got free energy, 180, draw until you've got six cards in your hand. Well, free energy, 180 is fine. It's not great. It's fine. But it's all colorless energy. And then you draw until you've got six cards in your hand. So this is one of those Pokemon where my theory is very simply, every time you can take a KO with this, you should. Because then you also get to do the whole drawing thing. No, it doesn't hit anything for weakness because it's colorless. No, 180 isn't a key number. You can whack a maximum belt on here. And then you hit 230, which is a key number. I'm not sure it's the best use of maximum belt. But I am saying if you're playing maximum belt, this will give you a chance to KO basically any basic EX or V while drawing two of your six cards in your hand. It's not terrible. So if you're playing maximum belt, keep that in mind. But this is just good, honestly. I love this card. And then they went and showed us Cramorant as well. Now, the Cramorant, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not the it's not the best card. In terms of playability, I don't think it's a controversial statement to say this Cramorant is not the best card. To be fair, to scold all energy from this Pokemon 120 to one of your opponent's bench, it's not actually terrible. It's basically Cramorant V. And Cramorant V was a really good card that did actually see a bunch of play. So, it's not terrible. It is absolutely not terrible. It is not the best card. I don't think anyone is claiming it's the best card. But you've got the combination here of colorless energy and being able to do decent damage to the bench. And I think if you add those two things up, this is pretty good. Obviously, it's the artwork here we're mostly worried about. The artwork here is beyond amazing. I adore this artwork. Uh, Fujimoto Gold has just knocked it out of the park here. Stunning card and using blur, which I know not everybody loves, but I think it looks beautiful in this particular card. 
and it's absolutely lovely. It's it's going to be a card I'm looking to get from this set because look at it, it's beautiful. Plus, Cramorant is low key one of the best Gen Eight Pokemon. I'm just putting that out there. I don't even think it's a controversial statement. Cramorant's just kind of cool, honestly. I like Cramorant. Also, there is a stuffle hidden away on this artwork, which makes me very, very happy indeed. So there we go. We now have confirmation of the Elite Trainer Box promo being that Ogre Pond, which is lovely. We've seen Blissey in English, which is a card I could not be that much more excited about. And we got ourselves a reveal of Cramorant as well, which, you know, artwork's kind of stunning, is it not? So yeah, go team. This is cool. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about these cards. Tell me how excited you are for Twilight Masquerade. Tell me what you're excited for from Twilight Masquerade. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Andrew Kincaid, who is a very lovely person who was at the Play Lab at EUIC, and is just always helping people, and is very lovely. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.